I want you to be disciplined at growing your brand, your business, your art, whatever it is that you have set out on a mission to and you are on that mission right now. Every part of discipline that it takes to do that. Go do that. But don't just do that. Start the journey of looking for inspiration. When you have a moment where you're stepping away from your work desk, your workplace, or your, the place where you're productive, use that time, whatever little or, or the most amount that you have, to go experience life. Welcome to today's podcast. Uh, we've got a, I've got a solo one for you today. So normally we have some guests, uh, but I've also been doing these solo podcasts just to get a, a solid message out to you. There's this, this message that we're going to get in today that I feel like is underrated in the process of creating. It's even underrated in the process of, of building a brand or, you know, wherever you are on, on your path. It is a foundation that we'll always tap back into to get things going. Before we get into today's message, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, be sure to hit the subscribe button or just like it or leave a comment below. If you've watched other episodes, let me know what you think or even let me know other topics you want me to cover. If you're listening to this on any uh, podcast platform, be sure to uh, just follow it or even you can leave a review on Apple Podcasts as well. But either way, we're going to get into this message today that I hope becomes a foundation for now and forever. But understanding that finding inspiration is underrated, but it is one of the most important foundations that you'll ever need on your paint method journey. Let's go. We are all on our paint journey, but where are we now? And where do we go next? This is how passion, action, intent, new, teach. This is The Paint Method. All right, I'll come out with it. I'll just, I'm just going to say it, that finding inspiration is underrated. Matter of fact, the whole art process is dependent on how you go and find inspiration. Matter of fact, life in general, pursuing a career, pursuing something that you love and enjoy, uh, you know, with that added discipline, it all starts with how are you inspired and what are you inspired by? Now, I say this because there's so many different uh, factors that played into my success today and the momentum that it took to build up to today and along the way. And the foundation of this was a simple fact that I did not just do art. Now, contrary to what we think uh, to be a master at something, and in no way am I saying I'm a master, I'm just saying that I get to do this professionally and full time, and I'm very blessed for that. But for, for you to at least get to that point to build that momentum, there's a lot of discipline involved. There's a lot of discipline in the process of picking up new skill sets, of uh, the discipline of networking, uh, creating content to get the word out about who you are. I mean, discipline and the act of creating, you cannot skip that. But this other part that comes actually way before that, finding inspiration. Now, being a performance painter, which is what I am now and today, uh, being a father, being a, a, you know, a bunch of different things and hats, it, all of it really went back to when I was younger, when I realized, yes, I was an artist, but my parents did something for me and I'm forever grateful for this, that they pretty much said, look, you're not going to just do art. And whether that's they actually said it or through their actions of the series of events that I'm going to share with you. Now, when I was younger, one of the very first uh, pieces of inspiration that just had an impact on me in my life was the movie, uh, it was the movie Fantasia. So the original one by Disney, and it was a, a bunch of different animated shorts that were a combination of sound and color. And that's really what, you know, animation is. Animation is movement and color and story and all these things. But there was something about Fantasia, specifically 
these animated shorts about sound and color, it just stood out to me. It it struck me in a way that any other animated movie or series really hadn't done that to me. And I had watched it, and I've watched it probably over a hundred times. I mean, a ridiculous amount of times. And so that was one foundation that I realized, okay, I'm really into the mixture of sound and color. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. But it was that moment, stepping away from the act of doing art to just go watch a movie that I was inspired by, that eventually uh, inspired me so much to, even in my career now. And I sort of just set that away in my heart. Now, the next piece where my parents just said, look, you're not just going to do art, you're going to go. And then they said, try out for the school orchestra. I'm like, what? I'm an artist. What, what do I need to do uh, playing a trumpet? Like, what? how is that going to help me become a better artist? Didn't matter. They signed me up, and I was committed to going to these music classes. Again, another moment where I, I learned how to become a beginner again at the trumpet. You know, there's a certain way you got to uh, blow the air through the horn and, and pucker your lips and the vibration. There's a lot of other skill sets and discipline along with that. But this experience that was now inspiring me, it uh, it started striking me in a new way where I started to develop this love for music not just playing it reading it seeking it out and it opened up this door to uh, classical music country music hip-hop like you name it just music in general is what just started moving me in a whole new way and this started in you know third grade fast forward still doing art I have the music experience still doing that uh I'm, I'm really into animated short films, you know, opening me up. And that sort of led me to naturally graffiti, <laughs> another experience. Probably not the best positive, but it still had an influence. It was something outside of just just doing art, and it was a different type of act of art, you know, going and using spray cans, uh, spraying on things that I didn't own, and uh, running from the police at some point. But... It was another experience, stepping away, moving me. Shortly after that, because I was getting into so much trouble with graffiti, one of my art teachers said, look, I'm clearly not having enough impact on you. I think you need to work with another teacher. So they walked me over to uh, Sean Sullivan's room, Mr. Sullivan at Sheldon High School. He was teaching an animation program. And as soon as I saw it, as soon as I started this class, it all started to click the Fantasia movies by Disney growing up, the sound and color experience while still doing art, the music and the, the feelings and emotions that music can evoke, learning that early on. And, uh, graffiti, uh, learning how to sweat while I'm creating art as I'm running from the police. No, there was a lot of other skill sets that were learned in that. And then this animation class, and it all started coming together. The story, the sound, the color, not necessarily the movement, but it's, again, it wasn't just about drawing. It was There was so much more to it. And then there was other really important piece to my journey that didn't have anything to do with the act of art. This one specifically. It was dance. Uh, for some reason, I was just intrigued by this dance group at my high school at the time. And my good friend, Ryan Revac, uh, had this group with a couple other mutual friends. And they were doing talent shows. And I saw them. And I was like, I want to dance like that. And it was like this music video style dancing where there's a synchronicity to the music that's like a, a sight and sound movement. So I went to Ryan. I said, I want to learn how to dance. And he's like, all right, meet me in my garage the next day. So I went to his garage and we would just practice. And eventually we started performing locally at, you know, quinceañeras and cotillions and, uh, you know, local schools. But learning how to become a performer was something that was woken up because I was open to a new experience outside of just drawing. 
Eventually that led to another dance group uh, and, and that group called Boogie Monsters here in Sacramento, California. The founding members of that went on to go start Jabberwockies, which is another story for another day. But the combination of these experiences that I had stepping away from art, being inspired, and then this part, learning how to convert that inspiration into art. So as I started painting early on when I was around 20 years old painting live, I started creating what I was inspired by, which is all these things I just told you about before. The uh, movement of the figures in animation, the, the music and the sound that I was playing growing up, the jazz, orchestra, hip hop, the uh, just the, the act of painting as well, the large scale paintings from, believe it or not, graffiti. And it was a combination of all these things. I still didn't even know where it was going, but it was preparing me for this very moment that eventually uh, I came across the artwork of Denny Dent. And we'll, we'll talk about him another day. We'll go into detail. But Denny Dent was the first rock and roll painter. At the time in 2003, there wasn't much video to show me what it looked like, but he was like a, a, a performer of art on stage. And that very moment in 2003 when I saw that painting someone described to me how it was done that it was done with sound color movement there was some story involved as well and it was a performance it was everything that I had almost almost everything that I'd stepped away from art to go live life to be inspired now I want you to be disciplined at growing your brand, your business, your art, whatever it is that you have set out on a mission to and you are on that mission right now. It, every part of discipline that it takes to do that, go do that. But don't just do that. Start the journey of looking for inspiration. When you have a moment where you're stepping away from your work desk, your workplace, or your, the place where you're productive, use that time, whatever little or, or the most amount that you have, to go experience life. Now, there's one other thing I got into later on, uh, maybe only just a few years ago. I don't know how I'm going to convert this into, uh, into art yet, but... Uh, you know, I, I was on this really crazy tour schedule, and when I would come home just to get a break from it, to step away, I would go stand-up paddleboarding. And it became this this thing where I went and ended up buying a stand-up paddleboard, and I take my kids out now, and it's just a, it's an escape for me. And I'm not approaching that like I'm going to convert this into stand-up paddleboarding art. I'm converting that into peace of mind. So there's more from this when you step away to go find inspiration it's not just about turning it into something for your business or for work. You can also turn it into peace of mind. You can turn it into, uh, you know, just some, some grace for yourself. If, if you're having a difficult time uh, building your business with your family, whatever that is. But I just want to emphasize this. Let's just say it's your art or your business or this discipline. Don't just do that. Leave room and, and find time to go live life and to go be inspired. And hopefully it's in line with something that you enjoy or that you want to grow at. And I hope that that leads to you converting it into maybe something for you to create or for your business or your brand, or at least that you can convert it into peace, into peace of mind, into uh, a great story to tell your colleagues or, or your friends later on, at least that, to go and find inspiration. And I think that that process is underrated. I think there's too much emphasis on the act of the final product because it all stands on the foundation of, of knowing what moves you. And even when you get an artistic block or a, a, a blocking in your creative process, you always know what to go back to because you know what it's like to be inspired. So I hope this message was helpful to you. I just want to thank you all again for those of you who are listening to the, even these uh, short 
paint method messages, uh, whether you're on your ride to work, driving the kids, whether you're in your, your studio working, or maybe you're on the treadmill, wh wherever it is, I just want to say thank you so much for watching, listening to these. If you're listening to this on any podcast platform, be sure to hit the follow button, and also you can leave a review on Apple Podcasts, or if you're watching this on YouTube right now, be sure to hit that subscribe button and even leave a comment below. It helps us out with the algorithm, helps push it, this message into other people. Either way, wishing you all the best on your paint method journey. Thank you.